In today's tutorial, we're going to cover a very interesting project called Orbach Tower, led by teams from University of Stuttgart and ETH from Zurich. We're going to combine both Grasshopper and Rhino to create and optimize this model for production and rendering. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at this product. You can see here on this page, some images. This tower was uh, built uh, completely in wood. I mean, it was prefabricated in wood. There were a couple of teams working, working on this tower. You can see various images here from uh, different photographers. And what I really like uh, is the context of this tower and uh, the environment. So you can see it's completely uh, built in nature. It has a beautiful view. And also you can see below the construction process and the way that this design was produced completely from, from wooden panels, which were bent and carved. And it's really interesting to see how something like this can be done. It uh, has a lot of uh, cool, intricate details. Um, now we're going to get started and we're going to see how uh, we can you know, build this in Grasshopper and Rhino and optimize it for, uh, for rendering. So first off, you know, I would like to think a little bit about this project. Like when you, when you take a look at this, you know, and then you have this kind of shape that you want to create. First thing that I do, I actually, you know, think about what is the process of creation? Or what is the, the most uh, interesting way that we can create this uh, based on simple steps? We can see that this is like a cylinder that has, I think, around 12 sides. And you can see on this image here that the edges are not straight. So we need to have this kind of um, curvy edges. And then it's actually twisting as it goes up and also it's rotating uh, on its axis. So uh, this is the concept that we're gonna be using. And let's go to Rhino. Here I have the definition ready and I'm gonna explain the process of, of thinking when it comes to creating this. So first thing is the point. Uh, I usually start here with a point and based on that point, we're going to create a polygon. So this is a polygon with 12 sides. Here you would adjust the radius and you would adjust how many segments it has. So in this case, we have uh, 12 or 12 sides, but uh, what I really want to do here, I want to find a way to make this uh, edges a little bit curvy like this. What's the best way to do this? So here uh, you can see that um, we, we took this line and we exploded it here. And now uh, it has all of these different segments and it has uh, vertices below. We're going to take and we're going to build perpendicular frame here on every single every single line. So here you can see that every single line has its own perpendicular frame. And based on this perpendicular frame, we're going to find the, the middle. So we can find the middle here. Here from this point, uh, all we need to do is move this point. So the, the whole idea is uh, to move this point up and then to make an arc based on that point. That's the idea behind this part of the definition. So here, uh, you can see that we have motion vector that's uh, that's moving the, the origin point. And then at the top here, we have curves, which are gonna be input into the arc three point. Once we click here, you will see that uh, now our arcs are created based on the second point that you chose. So, so here you can see how I'm gonna change the radius here. And based on that radius, the whole, the whole structure is going to change. So let's bring this back as it was something like this and let's let's move on so now once we have this once we have this arc we need to join these curves of course once we join them we can continue let's see what we have so i'm gonna hide this and now we're left with this element okay what is the next step so here if i if i turn on on this guy you will see here that we divided this couple of ways so let's let's go back a little bit and let's see what we did here so here First, we have a circle, and now you might be wondering, okay, but why are we, uh, why are we talking about this, um, this circle? So, let's continue here. We have uh, the evaluate curve uh, component here, and what this does, this chooses uh, any kind of uh, point that we put on this curve based on this parameter. So you can see if I, if I'm changing this parameter, you can see how the whole structure here is changing, but. We're going to get to that a little bit later. So, okay, so what we have here, as I said, we have one vector with two points. And if you turn this guy on, you will see the location of this vector. So this vector is going from the initial point 
to this point on the circle that we created. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because we want to find uh, this vector. As you can see, our product is a little bit, you know, uh, slanted. It, it has some kind of angle to it. So that's the reason why we want to, to, to use this vector. And then we want to combine that vector. You can see, so this is the typical Z vector. This is the height and if you if you add these two vectors so let's call it a and b if you just uh, do a simple addition a plus b you're gonna get a vector that's gonna be this guy so once we do the addition here a plus b you're gonna get the vector and that's exactly the vector that we want to use and that's why we're using here the length of this vector uh, as a range and then we're simply using uh, we're simply using this range uh, with the amplitude uh, to give it uh, the amount of motion that we want to have. So here you can see if I'm if you, if I'm changing this, uh, you will see that the height is going to change. So let's bring it back as it was before. So 13.95, and now let's see the next step. So I'm gonna hide this, and I'm gonna hide this one, uh, and we kind of know this part. We did simple move but what is what is going on here so this is the part that is connected with the scaling so here we have a simple move command we have the area the middle area of these uh shapes and here we have the scale you can see once i turn this guy on you can see how the scaling is occurring based on the on this uh point in the middle that's why we want to use a centroids and that's why we created these two graph mappers so first one is uh you can see you can see here kind of the results so if i select this guy you can see if i'm gonna if i'm gonna change this shape it's also gonna change the shape of the of the of the scaling of the shapes below there uh and so on so this is this is the reason why we want to have the scaling factor based on these mapped um, numbers which are from zero to one and they're mapped onto this domain next one below this is the second one but i'm gonna get to that one a little bit later so first what we do here we simply take this scaling vector and now we continue with this so now uh, let's hide this guy we don't need this one as well we don't need this vector as well now we're going to uh, do the rotation so the whole idea of doing the rotation is for example if you just go left here it's going to be straight so our whole idea is to rotate this and and give it that look um natural look that's why we're doing the rotation and here uh same story we're gonna use the midpoints we're gonna use uh, the x y plane as the plane of the rotation and uh once we do the rotation you will see that these curves are going to rotate so based on the very bottom it's going to start gradually to, to rotate as it goes goes up and the whole idea behind this part of the definition is to control that kind of rotation so we have a similar story we have a range from zero to one we have number of steps is the same for both uh, scaling and um, a rotation and uh, here we have uh, the main uh, with the angles here so we, it, it's really important that we put the radians so that we can put this uh, into the angle option here once we do the, the rotation uh, we can simply finalize the loft all right so now once we have the lofting done let's see uh, what our next step is so all idea behind uh, behind this last element here this this last part of the definition is to somehow extend this uh, shape so we can kind of like pull it up in one direction and the other direction so it kind of extends uh, on this axis and this is exactly what uh, this shear angle is going to do okay so once we have uh, the loft here the next step would be to create um, the situation for this component that's called shear angle so so the way that this works first we need to create a bounding box around our loft so uh, we, we need to give it at uh, the base around which this is going to rotate so the whole idea behind this uh, component is that for example we need to set for example this edge as a base and then the whole structure is going to rotate around around this edge and we can go like um, if you go on this side it's going to be a plus if you go on that on this side it's going to be a minus so uh let me show you uh how that works so i'm gonna 
first just show you uh, exactly what I mean by that and then we're gonna do it so for example you can see here like I'm, I'm changing this slider and it's it's gonna getting towards this edge here and uh, if you go in the minus it's gonna uh, do the same thing on the opposite side so the whole idea behind this component is that we just want to lift it up just a little bit like this and that's why we're using this uh, this option so I'm gonna leave it back as uh, I think number five was was actually the correct one and let's just see how this would work so we have bonding box because we want to select only this uh, this plane here we would need to use the construct uh, bureau rep and we're going to use the list item to actually select only this side so here you can see this component is going to give us all of the planes of the bonding box and then we just pick number uh, number three that's the one that we need and here we're going to use this as a base of our plane origin we're going to use this this guy here a valid box so based on this point we're going to set the origin of this plane which means that like if i uncover this plane it's gonna you know it's gonna be here okay so once we used uh once we use the valid box here to get this point for the origin of the plane we're going to hide this guy and now we have the plane around which uh this is going to be rotating around so this is going to be a base and our geometry is going to rotate around this base and here we're going to change the angle in the x direction and the angle in the y direction so in this case uh, the x direction is gonna be let me show you so this is gonna be the x direction and this is going to be y direction so in our case we don't want to use y direction we just want to use it as zero but uh, i just wanted to show you that that's also a possibility so let's bring this back to number five and we're almost done let's let's take a look so now we have everything that we need and we can we can see uh, our our final result and this is uh, what we're gonna get now of course when it comes to you know optimizing this further we're gonna do this in rhino but for now this is the process that you would take to to create something like this now i'm gonna show you with reference images around how that would look so you can see that it fits quite well and of course we're gonna do some manual work in rhino as well all right so now let's bake this and let's continue in rhino so i'm gonna right click bake and let's uh, continue from here if you're in architecture and you're interested in learning more about trying and grasshopper but you're tired of searching through thousands of tutorials online and wasting so much time doing that and you're looking for a structured learning approach with one-on-one -on -one support we've created a course called Rhino for architects that will guide you through all of the basics of both Rhino and grasshopper in addition to that we will be covering some advanced modeling techniques using subdivision tools for Rhino 7 which will allow you to create any kind of geometrical shape that you imagine when it comes to grasshopper we'll explain every single component with examples and homework files so even if you're a total beginner you'll be able to understand the logic and mathematics behind the program on top of that, we'll teach you all about various plugins for Rhino that are used in architecture, such as V-Ray, Visual Arc, and even Bungo for architectural animation. Lastly, we will cover architectural presentation, creation of diagrams, and a couple of case study projects. If this sounds something like you'd like to check out, feel free to schedule a free Zoom call with us. On this Zoom call, we'll evaluate your current skill sets, determine if the course can help you out, and on top of that, we'll share our learning platform with you, so you can get a better idea of how that all looks on the inside. Click on the link below, and we'll talk soon. Let's continue from here. Something that I would like to change here, now if you take a look at uh, this side, you will see that we're gonna have some kind of edge like like this however in our model uh, it's it's pretty straight so let's go to the side view. let's let's try to uh to correct this so i'm saying sim i'm simply going to try to draw the thing that i see here so let's just trace over it and let's see if we can get this this kind of shape so something like this and i'm going to use this curve i'm going to extrude it and let's simply do split here i'm gonna split my object with this guy and uh we're going to ungroup it and take this off so now you can see that we're gonna get the same kind of top as as we see here all right so now let's create this this opening so here i'm gonna just you know just go to the side view and i'm gonna draw a couple of lines i'm gonna probably try to trace uh this element here that we see but of course 
uh, we can modify this, we can change this based on our design. So I'm just gonna take this as a template and then I'm, I'm gonna modify this based on our model. So let's uncover the project here and let's see how this would fit. So in this case, maybe this would fit on the back side. Let me check. So I'm gonna probably, yeah, let's hide this for a sec and also these two. So let's see if I extrude this, is this going to make sense on this side? So yeah. So this would make sense on this side. And then I assume that we would need to flip it here. So I'm gonna mirror it like this. And I'm gonna use this, this part for the front and this part for the back. However, we need to make sure that we have this in the correct height. Uh, let's, let's see how far this would go in. Okay. So we would need to move it slightly. What I would do here, I would probably do just one extrusion here and I would do intersect with this guy and that will give me the point where these guys will meet. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to just move it to that location. So from here to here and I think this would work well. So here I'm going to do a split gonna split the object with these two and I'll have that opening okay and now let's check uh, let's see if this is gonna be big enough yeah that's about right and I'll do the same thing on the front so I'm gonna pull it in like this and let's move it slightly on the left something like that okay and let's go in a little bit more same story, you can do extrude edge. Let's put it in this direction. Let's do intersect with these two. And we have that line where we need to put it from. So uh, I'm gonna take these two guys and I'm gonna move them from, from this point to this point. Okay. And now here, let's, let's again do the split. Split with both of them and we're done. And this will give us uh, that nice. Once we have that, we can think about the creation of the of the staircases here. So I'm simply going to go over this, and I'm gonna quickly create some some lines. I'm gonna create one line from here, going all the way here. Same story on this side, but here we can see that it's actually going slightly inward like that. So. I, I guess that this side needs to be done a little bit curvy, like like this. Maybe even this one, but we cannot see it from the uh, from this angle. But let's imagine that it's gonna go here. Okay, and now I'm gonna simply do the one straight line. Let's do ex extend. There we go. Trim it, and now I'm going to create all of these stairs. Okay, and the last thing here that we want to do is try to make this kind of circle that's gonna go around. So I'm going to estimate that this is gonna be the center of the circle. And we're gonna, we're gonna do something like this, for example. Let's see something like that. And that would be our position for this for this circle. And now I'm simply going to trim this. Now I'm going to do curve boolean and I'm gonna select every second one and one more time this one and this one. Okay. Now I think we're almost ready. Of course, let's bring this guy uh, to the bottom and let's uncover the side view. We can draw this line here and we're all gonna use this as a reference for our stairs here. So let's go to the side view and let's start from here. So let's raise this all over here. One polyline from here to here. Okay, one more here. And now the height usually should be uh, the same. So let's divide this one, two, three, four, five, six. Divide six segments. And we're going to create, also we're gonna divide this 
one, two, three, four, five. So divide five segments, and now we have the exact measurements. There you go. Now I'm gonna copy this guy. And there it is. Now let's do the trim. Okay, let's join this. And now I can put this all in the same in the same plane. Guess it's not. Let's go to the side views. And let's bring it set point. Let's bring it here in the y direction. There it is. And now we just need to we just need to put this in the correct height. So let's imagine that this is gonna be the bottom. And here you can see how it fits. So uh, obviously we need to move this one a little bit to the side. There you go. First thing I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna extrude it. Then this one. second one, third one, fourth one, and fifth one. And it's gonna go all the way up until here. And of course, the circle. There it is. Let's do curve boolean. And let's use both of these and do a short curve here. There it is. Okay, so let's uncover uh, our object. Let's see how this looks. Okay, looks nice. So what we need to do here, we need to definitely bring this up. We're going to bring the whole thing, the whole structure. We're going to bring it up and let's go to the side view and let's bring it here to here. All right, and let's just draw this fence from here. There, and then let's put uh, this element here. So we know that this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be the location of our fence. Let's bring it all the way here, and this is gonna be the position. And now we just need to use the same uh, the same line. We have this curve from before. We can just extrude it up and we can put it all the way up here. And now here, I'm simply going to take these guys, let's isolate them. We can use, we can use control points, we can bring them down and duplicate this like so, and something like this. Okay, and then let's simply trim this and we can simply extrude them here. And then we do split. And we're done. There it is. That's our fence. We can give it a little bit of thickness. Of course, if you if you want to cut it here, you can do a boolean split. And then take this part out. We have the same thing going on on the other side here, as you can see. So I'm also going to... You see how this fence is going up, but it's following the uh, the shape of the, of the opening. So we need to take... Let's take this edge. Let's bring it down like so. Okay, let's split this with a couple of points. So I'm gonna pick, let's say one point here and one point somewhere around here. And we're gonna have this situation here. And from there, let's do this. Let's say something like this. Let's give it some thickness. And from there, we can uh, put our fence. You can see here in the detail, it has a little bit of um, space. Let's just use this edge. Let's offset it just a tiny bit, like so. Let's see what would be the smartest way to bring this up so we can bring it all the way here. Let's, of course, make sure that we have more or less the correct height. So, yeah, just slightly less. So, still there. And now we need to make sure that we have this these edges are actually following so let's do duplicate edge let's bring it slightly on the on the left on the right and then let's do this one as well duplicate edge let's bring it slightly here and we're going to take these two and are simply going to split this guy split okay we have the extra parts and now we know more or less how our fence is going to look like so let's divide this I'm gonna say duplicate edge. I'm gonna say divide 
13 segments, same story on the bottom. Let me select all of this and isolate it because we only need to work with, with this element at the moment. And here as well, duplicate edge can divide this into 13 segments, duplicate edge, offset curve on surface, zero one, something like this. And we can use the same thing here. And we can do the same thing on the top and the same thing on the bottom. And now it's just, a, just about connecting, connecting these points. The way that we would do this, we would simply create lines connecting them. All right, let's temporarily hide this guy. Let's do a small trim here. And now we can kind of join these outer edges. Let's do the join and let's uncover back our surface. And here, what we can do, uh, we can uh, use the command called pull. We can select all of the curves that we want to use this command on. So now I'm just selecting these curves and I want to project them on the surface. There it is. And we have this already done. And now uh, I simply, while I have this selected, I'm going to do the small pipe and I'm going to do the radius 0 0.01. And here, now I'm going to simply use this guy and extrude it. Okay, and here let's do the split. Let's split everything with this element and that will give us the perfect result that we were go going for. I'm going to take out all of this and uh, now we can simply do offset surface. Let's do the same distance of 0 0.03 for example and this will give us our fence. There it is. Okay, so before we finish the panels, uh, I can see here that we can slightly modify them. So you can see here that uh, the panel is quite close to the, to the fence here and the other side. So let's just manually try to fix this. I'm gonna select this point and I'm simply going to move it just a tiny bit here, like so. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna select the vertex and you can kind of move it closer here. And of course, make sure to, to follow the design principle. Okay, let's create a couple of uh, layers here. So let's call this concrete. Uh, let's call this bars and let's call this wood. Here we're gonna put everything on the wood layer. All right, so the idea behind creating this um, is gonna be the following. So uh, in order to create these, uh, these details, uh, we would need to have uh, the inner shell of this shape, right? So we're gonna have the inner shell. Then we're gonna take this, uh, this line, this edge, and then we will extrude it normal to this surface. And then we're going to do offset surface on both sides. And that's gonna give us this surface like that. And then we're simply going to use Boolean, uh, Boolean difference at that point. In order to do this, we need to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to offset this on the inside. Now, uh, I'm, I'm simply going to show you how I'm going to do this on one simple element, and then um, the rest is going to be the same. So I'm going to create one line from here to here. And also, I'm going to follow that that uh, edge all the way so it's gonna come all the way until here and we're going to create another line here okay so the idea is that uh, we can create sweep to surface based on this edge this edge and these two cross sections this will give us enough space to create a surface and then uh, of course uh, the next uh, the next um, iteration would be uh, to do, for example, let's say extract ISO curve and let's pick this kind of thickness, for example, and let's do here a uh, split and split this guy. Now we have only this element, right? And now we can simply do offset surface, both sides. And now when we want to do uh, the offset, I'm simply going to use offset surface again. This time let's do 0.05 and I'm gonna do the solid as yes. So the whole idea is that we have this element right that we want to do boolean difference with. So I'm simply going to slightly extrude this one so the boolean difference would work, something like that. And let's do boolean union. And now I'm gonna do here boolean, boolean difference. 
and you will see that I'm going to get a nice gap just like we have there in the example. And uh, at this point, I will uh, probably extract these surfaces and put them on a separate layer so we can put them in separate material later on. And that's how I'm going to do all of them, all, all of these edges. All right, so now once we are done with all these, uh, this is the final result. You can see uh, those gaps there. And uh, let's let's put them actually on this layer. So I'll just select uh, I'll select all of this. Then I'm gonna reverse selection and put them on the bars, on the bars layer. If you zoom in, you will see the black color. One thing that you also want to do, we want to take this top that we did previously. All right, and let's do a simple split here. Let's split all of these guys with uh, with this extrusion. And once once that is done, we'll be able to just delete everything on the top here. Now let's select the top. Let's say duplicate edge. Let's join it. And uh, let's simply do the patch here. And let's try to see the result. All right, and now uh, the way that we would trim this, we would simply select select those curves and uh, let's try to bring them up like this okay and once we have this um, this curve here we can do offset and um, the one that we just offset we can use to cut this uh, to cut the surface and let's do split and that's gonna be our top cover and of course um, we can also do slight extrusion here. Okay, well, we'll we'll finish off with that. That's our that's our top. First here, we also want to put the wood onto the correct correct layer. Concrete, we also want to put on the correct one. Uh, this will uh, make our life much easier afterwards when we want to do some rendering. And of course, let's put this guy on the bars layer and the terrace on the ground as well. All right, so this is the final result of our model. We finished uh, modeling both in Grasshopper and Rhino. Uh, this is the final outlook of the, of the shape of the project. I think it turned out pretty well. Let me know in the comments uh, if you have any additional questions. And we're going to have the extended version of this tutorial on our Patreon only, where we're gonna go in much more detail in terms of the rendering and visualization into emotion with that you will get access to all of our extended tutorials and extra project files on our patreon page